All right, hey everyone, Prerock again. Thanks for tuning in to the video. Today's MCAT question of the day um, is actually something I think is really good. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. It says Gaucher's disease is a lysosomal storage disease that is caused by a mutation in the gene encoding the protein glucocerebrosidase. Glucocerebrosidase is an enzyme found in the lysosome. Based on this information, what is the optimum pH of glucocerebrosidase? This is a hallmark MCAT question. And the reason why I'm going to say it's a hallmark MCAT question uh, is for two reasons. One, first of all, most of you don't even know what the heck this probably is. None of you have heard of Gaucher's disease in your life, and yet you're being asked a question on it. That's the number one thing that makes a hallmark MCAT question. Unknown, you know, unknown info, right? Because no one really knows what Gaucher's disease is because you're, you're not really a doctor yet. You just are the one who's supposed to understand the concepts. So Gaucher's disease is the thing that's being asked about. So that's going to make this a hallmark question because it incorporates disease. But the second thing that's going to make this a hallmark MCAT question is that it takes this disease, this Gaucher's disease, and it connects it to a concept. That is where the MCAT just loves capitalizing on um, students. And the reason why it loves capitalizing on this is because, is because, um, as a doctor, you're dealing with diseases. So the fact that they can ask you questions on diseases is something the NCAT really loves to do. Second of all, this isn't really a question about the disease. If you actually go into this question, it's asking about the enzyme glucocerebrosidase, right? Um, let me go ahead and change pens and so we can emphasize it's asking about glucocerebrosidase and so even though it's about a disease it's connecting it to a concept about enzymes which you may which you should have learned in school and so we're going to answer this question um, but the, I just wanted to point out why this is such a hallmark MCAT question because it takes an unknown information which is the disease and now it asks you to connect it to a concept which is enzyme activity um, so before we get into that, anytime I mention a disease, I feel kind of obligated to talk a bit about it, and that's just because I think diseases are so fascinating, it's such a great application of science. And so Gaucher's disease is actually caused by a um, mutation, as the question says, in this enzyme called, called glucocerebrosidase. Okay, it's caused by a mutation in this enzyme. And the mutation in this enzyme prevents the enzyme from working properly. So if the enzyme was working properly, what it actually does is the enzyme takes this thing called glucocerebroside, right? <laughs> glucocerebroside, which is a compound, right? It's just a compound. You don't need to know the function, by the way. Everything I'm telling you right now is just something I want you to know, just for your context for the disease, but you don't actually need to know it for the question. Um, but it takes glucocerebroside and it converts it into a product, right? But let's say we have a mutation in this enzyme. Let's say if you have a mutation in glucocerebroside, then what happens is there will be no product formed because the enzyme is not working properly. And then ultimately what will happen is that this glucocerebroside will be produced at very, very large amounts. Like we, the enzyme doesn't use it up, so glucocerebroside builds up. And that's where you end up getting the disease. So here, this image, as you can see at the bottom, this image shows you that in a normal lysosome, you actually have very little glucocerebroside, right? You see this? But in a Goucher cell, the glucocerebroside builds up in every single lysosome to a very, very large extent because no one can, nothing can break it down. And this buildup of glucocerebroside is what leads to the disease symptoms, such as fatigue. Um, you, get, um, you get fatigue, you get dizziness, you get, um, you get a bunch of symptoms of, the, of this disease. And so the fact is, we're connecting this disease all the way down to a defect on, at an, about an enzyme. And that's what makes it so fascinating. Um, and that's why I always feel obligated to talk about the disease, because you start seeing that diseases are linked at the molecular level. With that being said, let's move on to the lysosome. So what is the function of the lysosome? So the lysosome is a lot more basic. So this is something you should know for the MCAT. Everything I mentioned on this slide, on slide two, you don't need to know to answer the question. It's something I told you because I want to educate you. I want to make, give you some uh, cutting edge uh, research knowledge, but you don't need to know it. But you, what you do need to know is everything I'm about to talk about, which is lysozyme info. So as always, lysozyme is an organelle, right? Um, and the fact that it's an organelle means it's probably found in eukaryotic cells because eukaryotes are the ones with organelles. But more importantly, it's, it tends to be found in animal cells. So. Um, it's, it's an animal cells organelle, okay? Um, and so the function of the lysosome, um, the function, which I've drawn down here, 
is first of all just digestion. of cellular contents, okay? And what that means is the lysosome is where everything that gets taken into the cell and uh, wants to be degraded is degraded, okay? And that's what the lysosome is such an important organelle, okay? Um, there are lots of ways these things will be broken down. I'm going to talk a bit about them. Uh, and let me go ahead and show you this picture right here. You see this picture? Um, this picture I'm highlighting in red right now. It, it, it actually shows you many of the ways things are taken in. So the first way is phagocytosis, right? So phagocytosis is obviously things come in that you don't want, like a bacterium, then the cell will eat it up and the lysosome will degrade it. So that's phagocytosis. Endocytosis is for much smaller things. So endocytosis is for things like proteins. So in this case, the lysosome is actually responsible for, you know, breaking down proteins that you might not want all the time, or maybe breaking down proteins that are present in excess amounts. And last but not least, I want to bring up this bad boy right here. It's called autophagy. Autophagy is also something that the, um, the lysosome does. And autophagy is kind of recycling your own cell's contents. So, you know, mitochondria in this, in this picture, you see this picture right here. The mitochondria that wear down are actually degraded down in the lysosome. So mitochondria that don't work as well will be degraded in the in the um, in the uh, lysosome. And I'm going to talk a bit more about autophagy because it's basically like self recycling is what I like to think about it as. Okay, you're recycling the cell's contents. Um, this actually won the Nobel Prize just this year, believe it or not. <laughs> the person who discovered autophagy. Um, 2016 Nobel Prize winner in physiology and medicine, uh, Yoshinori Osumi. Uh, really great, really amazing to see that application. Um, and so the way that all of this degradation actually happens is through enzymes. And so in the lysosome, there are 60 plus hydrolytic enzymes. Okay, and all of these enzymes break things down. Okay, and this image right here tells you what kind of enzymes there are. There are nucleases like DNA and RNA that break down um, DNA and RNA that you might not want. There are protein digesting enzymes like collagenase, cat. I'm not even going to say that one, but there are proteases. There are carbohydrate digesting enzymes. There's, there's a ton of enzymes that break things down, and that's what the lysosome is there for. It's breaking things down. Okay, and anytime you have a mutation in these, if you have a mutation in these uh, enzymes, as you know already, you get disease. Remember, the disease, the Gaucher's disease, is a mutation in one single enzyme. Any of these enzymes are mutated, you get another disease. And it's phenomenal that um, something so small can have such a big effect. But the other thing I'm going to say is all of these enzymes work at a pH of 5. The lysosome itself has a pH of 5. And you might be wondering, why does the lysosome have, have a pH of 5? Well, the body, right, your normal body has a pH of 7.4. So everything in your body functions at a pH of 7.4. But when you don't want something, the lysosome is a place where you don't want things, right? The pH 5 helps those things get degraded. So everything you don't want that ends up in the lysosome, the pH 5 basically facilitates degradation. Right, because if everything is used to being at pH 7.4 in your body, then when it gets into the lysosome, it'll be like, why is the pH so acidic here? And it'll get, it'll facilitate the degradation. But with that being said, what that also means is if we go back to our original, original question, the fact that glucocerebrositis is an enzyme found in the lysosome, the fact that this enzyme literally lives its entire life in the lysosome and works in the lysosome to break things down means that it must be okay functioning in the lysosome. I mean, lysosome. Right, and if it's functioning in the lysosome, remember the lysosome has a pH of about five, right? And therefore, the enzyme must also be optimally working at a pH of five. Enzyme must function like really well at pH five, and that is actually the case. The optimal pH for um, glucocerebrositis is five. And so the best answer here, believe it or not, is C, and it's nothing else. Uh, and this is a really great question. Any enzyme that's in the lysosome will function optimally at a pH of 5. Um, and so that's a great way to apply this fundamental concept to theory. And so that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, get a big thumbs up if you did. 
See you on, see you in the next one.